already. King Cobra is the deadliest snake on the planet. Later on in the video, we're gonna actually show you why the King Cobra is considered one of the most deadly snakes. But the King Cobra actually has the second largest venom yield on the planet. That's what makes them so deadly. But the first, the Gaboon Viper. The longest fangs of any snake in the world and the biggest yield of venom of any snake on the planet. And we're about to find out why. Oh, ho, ho, went right over the glass. Look at that venom. And those fangs, two inch fangs, a big gaboon viper. And look at that venom. I tell you what, I got the shakes. Look at that. I'm shaking like a leaf because you are so close to death. And the worst thing about this venom here, it'll make your leg and your arm fall off, but it's gonna stop your heart. And Will has three King Cobras, absolutely iconic snakes. Of course, the longest venomous snake in the entire world, and oftentimes think is one of the most deadly. That's a little bit of a misnomer. There's a difference between deadly and toxic. And we're gonna find out what that means here in a little bit. We're here at Will Nace, my buddy's place, with these amazing animals. And by the way, I will put all the links in the description to his stuff. Go give him a follow. You guys may recognize this little baby cobra, because Will, you just recently did a video that went crazy viral when you had these albino models. Tell me a little bit about these guys. Tell me a little bit about their toxicity. These guys are actually more toxic than a king cobra. I had a buddy that got bit in the stomach. You actually know him. David Weathers. David yeah. Weathers, yeah. yeah. So he was my mentor. He got bit in the stomach and his hole in his stomach or his scar in his stomach is still there because it basically just started rotting away right where it bit him. So he almost actually lost his life. So their venom is a lot worse than the king cobra when it comes to the toxicity of it. But again, the yield is not as bad. Well, you know how people always say, oh, a baby snake's worse because they just pump you with their venom. But their venom yield is smaller, right? Because yeah. they're smaller. So tell me a little bit about that. In a cobra this size, he's maybe has Probably. less than a drop's worth of venom in each side. If they were to bite you, yes, they cannot control it, but they don't have the amount of venom that an adult does. If an adult were to bite you, it's gonna put you know three or four drops from each fang in you, where this guy is gonna put less than a drop from each side. Really not as bad as it really puts it out to be. Snakes. Now, some snakes are different. Exactly, and that's the thing about the monocles. Even as adults, they don't have that big venom yield, right? But that's still a bite you don't wanna get. And these no. guys have a little cardio toxin in it too, so they'll literally uh, stop your heart. While wow, they're amazing, and of course the monocle cobras, look at how beautiful that animal is. The monocle cobras are kind of like the corn snake of the venomous world. How many color morphs are there? I mean, there's oh, tons, God. right? I I mean, there's probably, I know of at least over 10, but between them and the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake, these guys are the corn snakes of the venomous world, and then I say that Western Diamondbacks are the ball pythons of the venomous world. My gosh, and tell me a little bit about that video. What was that like when you woke up and all of a sudden you had just tons of people message you probably like, oh my, oh my gosh. gosh over probably 200 messages, people asking to buy these little guys, Gosh. which, you know, none of them had venomous experience, permits or anything, so that didn't happen. I never would have expected that to happen from a video about taking care of little baby cobras. And I know you're super responsible when it comes to things like this. When you're finding homes for these cobras, you're th you're, you want people with experience, right? Yes. And you're, I mean, you're as responsible when it gets when it comes to venomous snakes. I tell you what, this is absolutely beautiful. What a wonderful snake and what a wonderful collection. Look at this feisty little monkey. There's still so much more to see. I am absolutely having the time of my life. This is the adult albino monocle cobra that Brian was talking about, those little babies. This is one of the parents right here. Now, it's a front fang venomous snake. It's called an elapid, just like the rest of the Australian snakes. They're all elapids. Now, we have the top five most venomous snakes in the world, including the Australian death adder, the tiger snake, taipan, eastern brown snake, and of course, the notorious inland taipan, which has the venom potential to kill you in about 45 minutes. Even though the inland taipan has drop for drop the most deadliest venom in the world, unfortunately, it's the most docile snake in the world, which means it's potentially not going to bite. And therefore, I think that eastern brown snake, for venom toxicity and aggression is probably number one in Australia. This over here is the African puff adder, the snake that kills more people in Africa than any other snake. It's got one of the quickest strikes in the world and probably the most tissue destructive venom of any snake on the planet. Now, as you'll see, look how it moves like a caterpillar. It moves across, cause it's a bit of a porker, but big in the toilet area. Now, these snakes over here, I've been bitten by one before. I tell you what, it's like sticking your hand in boiling oil and it's got massive fangs. Puff adders have fangs this big, almost an inch long and they'll drill it right down into your finger. Sometimes the bottom of the fang will come out the bottom of your finger. finger. Yeah, you guys can have all that venomous stuff. This is more my speed. Ooh. Oh my God. It's good. It's good. We 
get into pit vipers, oftentimes their venom toxicity isn't nearly as much. But tell me about this, Will. So this is a North Philippine temple viper. These guys are absolutely stunning, but they need a very high humidity, hence the paludarium. She gets misted about four times a day to wow. help that humidity up, and she also will drink off the leaves and the different plants in here too. So I want to make sure that she stays nice and hydrated with the mist system and the paludarium. And the thing about these guys is they're sexually dimorphic, meaning that the females are much larger than males. Pretty amazing, but all pit vipers are incredible. Will's got a bunch of them. So in here we have a Theris squamagera, also known as the squam bush viper. So these guys actually come from Africa, dingo's part of the world, not so much here. But these are some of the most common venomous snakes here in the United States. So this is a Trimosaurus purple maculatus, also known as a perp. So these guys are awesome. They are again sexually dimorphic because of the size difference. This is a female, you can see she's very large. And the male is back there, the little green guy hanging out there. She actually used to be red and she slowly started changing into a green perp. And look how keyed in she is. She always is hungry and food motivated. Dingo, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop making out with my lizard. He's cool. <laughs> so these are fancy pan vipers. Now you wanna talk about camouflage? Look at that. There is two snakes that you guys are currently looking at and you can't even see them. These guys come from Asia. They are absolutely stunning and they have little horns above their eyes. Of course. This is my favorite one in this room. This is a Trimosaurus. Well, you're up? I believe is how I said it. It's very hard, but we just call it the Pope's tree viper. These guys are stunning. Again, another snake from Asia. If you actually look close enough at their eyes, they have a little galaxy in them. It's crazy. Shut up. Shut up. And now it's time to see how much venom yield this cobra actually has. Come on, buddy. Oh, there it is. Oh, look at that venom just pouring out. And this is why they're so deadly, is they really juice you with their venom. They don't have the most toxic venom on the planet, but who doggy, you get bit by something like this and get this much venom in you, it's definitely gonna be a problem. What an absolutely beautiful snake. Now what I'm gonna do is just gently set it down so you're not overly stressing it out like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and just count to three. One, two, three. Ooh, I tell you what, that's the venom that I'm talking about. You get pumped with that, it's a problem. Is he gonna bite me? Uh, that's what the last guy said. <laughs> you let him bite oh me. We have to just go. Take a little break from the venomous to play with some foxes. And what's cool about this place is that they're opening up a non-for-profit zoo. I'm gonna put a link in the description to their Instagram. If you wanna show any support, we'll be back and do a bunch of content on it. Let's do it together, Armin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we'll hold do it, it together. Hold it with you. Hold it with you, Armin. Brian, get it. Did you get your finger? We're in here with Dingo, Peter, and Danger Danny. We've got a bunch of cool little alligators. Smash that like button, hit that subscription bell. Hey, speaking of out, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, 